Hello, and welcome to Paint Along Studios TV. We will be painting sandals on the beach today. We're going to need some supplies. We will need some paper towels, some water for cleaning brushes, some styrofoam plates, and some liquid acrylics. We will need some white, some deep yellow, burnt sienna, Mars black, phthalo blue, phthalo green, and bright red. We'll also need some brushes. We're going to need a number 10 filbert brush, a number two fan brush, a number six round brush, and a number zero script brush. Let's start with the number 10 filbert brush. We need three scoops of white. We're gonna be making our sand color. And we want to add one scoop of deep yellow, one scoop of burnt sienna, and a small dab of Mars black. We're gonna mix this together and get a nice light sand color. Once you have the color that you like, you can make slight alterations. Come to the canvas and put a mark in the top right corner and then move down about six inches to the other side and then you want to connect them with a nice curved line. It curves into the canvas a little bit down. Once you have that line, fill in everything below it with your nice sand color. I like the scoop and spread method. I get a big scoop on the end of my brush and then spread it as far as it will go. When the color is all the same, the direction does not matter. If you did not quite mix all your colors together, then it might matter which direction. You also want to hold the brush so that it's kind of like a pencil, but you want to hold it close to the bristles, kind of touching the black metal part of the brush. You want to even out your paint so everything dries at a relatively good rate. You want all the wet areas to be smooth to the dry areas. Next, we're going to be mixing a turquoise. We still want a dirty brush, but we're going to add a big scoop of white a small dab of phthalo green, a small dab of phthalo blue. So some of that sand color is going to get mixed in because we did not clean our brush. Come along the sand line with this color. And we're also going to come up into the white slightly. We want to fill about a third of the way up. So a third of whatever's left of that white. And then we want to blend a little bit, okay? I have a little bit less paint in my brush. You can wipe it out or just kind of run out naturally and you wanna blend where the sand and the water touch each other. Next, we're gonna get a scoop of white, a scoop of phthalo blue, and a scoop of phthalo green. Mix them together, get a medium turquoise color. Then we'll get a dark turquoise. We'll get a big scoop of phthalo blue, big scoop of phthalo green, and a small dab of Mars black. We wanna start with the medium color though, so wipe the color out of your brush paper towel, grab the medium color, and fill in another third of the white that's left. So leave a little bit in the corner for the last color. We wanna get these two areas to blend, so use your paper towel, squeeze some paint out, go back and forth where those two colors touch, wiping your brush every once in a while, and see how they get a little bit fuzzy where they touch, they get a little bit blended and mixed right there. We wanna do the same thing with the dark colors. So we're gonna grab the dark color, fill in that top corner with it, Okay, and then we're gonna blend again. So wipe our brush out and then gently brush back and forth, letting the bristles touch both the dark and medium color. Clean that brush, pound it up and down in the water. We wanna dry it using a paper towel. We wanna squeeze all the water out. We're already using liquid acrylics. We don't wanna add any extra liquid if we can help it. We're gonna mix on top of our sand. We're gonna make a darker version. So we want a scoop of yellow, a dab of burnt sienna, and a dab of Mars black. Get kind of a medium shade of our sand. Then we wanna get a big scoop of burnt sienna, small dab of Mars black, and a big scoop of deep yellow. So we'll have a darker version of this, a medium and a dark, and then we want a light. To get the light though, we'll have to wipe some of our paint out of our brush. So we're going to use a paper towel. Squeeze it out of there. Get a big scoop of white, a few dabs of deep yellow, should do it. Whatever's left in your brush will kind of suit the brown and the black in there. Then we want to come to the canvas. We want to use a little bit of each of those colors at a time. And we don't want to overfill our brush. We just want a little bit in our brush. So you might have to wipe it with a paper towel every once in a while. If you feel like there's a huge glob on the end, wipe it out. And just grab a little bit at a time and sort of spread it around. We're dabbing on the canvas. So think like a woodpecker, bing, 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 bing. Grab a different color, bing, 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 bing. 
move around anywhere there's a sand color. So we'll have some different colors going on. We want to have just little bits of paint at a time, but we are going to start layering on top of what we already have. So you'll notice some of the browns will start disappearing, some of the yellows will start disappearing because I'm overlapping with different colors on top of that and they're all kind of mixing slightly. So I do want to have this cool texture we got going on, but at the same time, I would like it to be a little bit muted. I want layers of it on top of each other. I want it to get blend into that wet color as we go. We want our water to also have a little bit of time drying. This next part, you'll either need to use a hair blow dryer if it's not quite dry yet, or if you spent enough time on your sand, it should be dry by the time you get to it. But we're gonna go ahead and switch brushes. Okay, so I'm gonna pound that one a few times, leave it in the water, switch to my fan brush, and I'm gonna grab just some clean white. I'm gonna start adding my sea foam along the water's edge, so where the water touches the sand. I'm gonna dab, 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 dab along that edge. So following that nice curve I gave myself earlier. I can make it thick or thin, just depending on how much I dab, how messy I get with the dabs. I like it a little thick, so I get a little messy. I'm gonna go ahead and start working across the rest of the water. I wanna follow that same sort of curving motion. Okay, so however my little water curved. Not all of the little lines, that I'm dabbing on have to be connected though. They can be shorter lines. I can just put a few little smears here and there, a few little dabs that are all separate, just like that. Okay, so I can have a little bit of sea foam. I'm gonna leave that brush in the water. I stirred it a little bit, but I'm gonna switch to my red handle brush, my number six round brush. Okay, I'm gonna get one scoop of white, one scoop of bright red, and one scoop of phthalo blue, I wanna get a purple. Make sure your sand is dry by this time. We also want a scoop of white and a small dab of bright red. We want a lighter version of this color. And then we want a darker. We wanna get a scoop of phthalo blue and a scoop of bright red. Get your purple preference if you want a little more blue, if you want a little more red, it's your choice, but have a light, dark, and a medium. Start with the medium and make two lines the same length as your brush. Okay, so one I like to tilt towards the ocean, the other I like to tilt a little bit to the side. I'm gonna divide it into two thirds. So two thirds towards the top, one third at the bottom, put a little line there. Then I wanna curve the top edge and the bottom edge. These are gonna be our sandals. Okay, so it's gonna curve inwards towards that one third little mark I gave myself. The other side is just gonna be a somewhat straight. It's gonna curve a little bit on each end, but it's gonna be a line that connects the two areas. Same thing for the other one, curve it inwards, let it touch that one third mark, but then the outer edge will just be kind of a straight line with a slight curve where it connects. You wanna fill in those sandals with your medium purple. We're gonna be getting some shadows and highlights in a minute. Go ahead and fill it all the way in. Again, we're making sure our sand is dry. If it's not, it's gonna mix with this color. So you might wanna use a hair blow dryer to dry it if it's still wet. Sometimes it dries fast, sometimes it dries slow. Just depends on how thick you paint or how quickly. If you go a little slower and you paint a little thinner, it'll be dry by the time you get to it. Gonna even out these edges a little bit. You can play with the shape slightly. Don't always have to keep the first shape you make. You can change it slightly. Then I'm gonna grab my light purple. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to my light purple. I'm gonna add a highlight along the right side of each of them. I'm working on top of the purple, so I'm not getting any bigger with it. Now I'm gonna get those two colors to blend. The purple's still very wet, so I wiped a little bit of the paint out and I'm getting the highlight color to mix. And I want to clean my brush, leave it in the water. I want to grab my little number zero script brush. I'm going to grab my darkest color and I'm going to have the shadow. The shadow is going to be on the left side and it's just going to be a line. It's almost like we're making the shoes a little bit 3D. Sandals are relatively flat. We want to give it a little bit of 3D-ness. So I'm going along either the bottom edge or the side that is to the left. I'm making the line very thin where it starts and then I'm pushing a little bit of pressure 
as I travel down the side of the sandal. I'm also going to mark off where I want the straps to go. You want two lines on either side, right where the one third little curve is, and then a line along the top, okay, a little straight line. This is going to mark where the sandals are going to stop and go. Clean this brush, stir it around, switch to the, to the number six brush though, dry it off. That one we kind of stir at the bottom. We're going to mix another color, add two scoops of white, and we're going to add a dab of bright red and a dab of deep yellow. We want kind of an orangey color. It can be a little more pink or a little bit more orange. I like it to be kind of a sunset pink, so I always add a little extra pink. I also want to make a dark version of this color, so I'm going to add a scoop of red, bright red and a little dab of black to make kind of a purpley color. I will start with the light color though, so clean your brush, get the light color. We want to make a starfish. Pick a good spot for it. I like it along this right side, somewhere near the water. I just make kind of a star shape, and then I want to fatten the edges. I like it to be kind of a fat starfish. So I kind of curve all the points. I don't like it super pointy. I like the edges to be a little bit pooched out. I want to switch to the small brush after that though, so dry it off. I want to add the shadow and the texture, so I'm going to switch to that purpley color that we made with the red and the tiny bit of black. I'm going to come along each of the arms and I'm going to try to choose either the side that's closest to being in the downward position or closest to the left. If I'm not sure, I'll choose the one that is more to the left. Okay, and I'm making a line along it and then I'm going, doing little tiny dots to create a little bit of texture. The dots get smushed into the line and then a few of them come above the line. But they stay really, really close to it. Okay, and I can spread them out a little bit or get really close together right along the line. That's what I like to do. So little tiny dabs. I want to create a bumpy texture. Okay, we want two scoops of white now. We cleaned our brush again. One scoop of deep yellow and a dab of bright red. This will be more of a yellowish orangey color. So less of a sunset pink, more of a yellowish orangey color. We're going to make a shell with it. So go ahead, we got our orangey color. We're gonna make a little circle, kind of on the other side, somewhere to the left. And we wanna make a flat edge on the circle, kind of going at an angle, and then two edges that curve away from that to create the main shell shape. We wanna come back to the flat side, and we wanna make a line below it that's parallel to it, but it's a tiny bit longer. Then we wanna connect those two shapes. Okay, I like to make my shell a little bit wider. Once I have a circular shape, I want it to make it a little wider, so I extend the little arms, okay, the little tiny lines that came out of the straight edge. Grab some of that purpley color again, and you want to come along the bottom edge of the shell or to the left side of it, kind of outlining it. So I'm going along the left side edges or the bottom edge. I'm also dividing the top shape from the bottom shape, I put a little line between them. Then I want to add some curved lines. One's going to curve to the right, one's going to curve to the left, depending on which side it's closest to. And I'm going to curve them down until they kind of reach that little middle line. If you want to make very thin lines, you're going to have to barely touch the canvas. I'm kind of resting my pinky on the canvas to give myself very, very thin lines. So barely touching. It might even mix a little bit with the wet paint, which would be nice. Some of them will look more faded. Some of them will look darker. I'm going to add some little tiny lines at the bottom as well, just to give it a little bit of a ribbed texture look. I want to thicken the outline again, so I don't want it as thin as all those little ribbed lines. I want it a little thicker where the shadow is. Okay, then I'll clean that brush, dry it out, make some new color. Two scoops of white, scoop of bright red. We want to get ourselves some pink for the sandal straps. Okay, I'm going to make a little line, a little rectangle almost, coming out of that first little mark we gave ourselves, the one at the top of each sandal. And then I want to curve away from it and touch the sand, and then I want to end up on the one that's towards the bottom. Okay, curve, touch the sand, and then have it end up over here Make it at least as thick as the little marks that we got, or a little bit smaller is fine too, but at least pretty close to that. Same thing over here. 
it goes straight, curves away, kind of touches the sand or gets close to it, and then it want to touch that mark down there. I'm going to thicken it. Don't want them super, super thin. Thicken it just a little bit so it matches kind of the line I gave myself. Same thing for the next sandal curve. Let it either touch the sand or get very close to it. Use the little marks we gave ourselves earlier as our reference. And then thicken the line. Curve away, end up on the outside of that little mark. We're going to use the same color that we used for the shadow on the shell and on the little starfish. So grab that kind of pinky purpley color that we had earlier. So I wiped a little bit of that out. I'm going to grab some of the pinky purpley color. And I'm going to go ahead and get some shadow on it. The first sandal, the one all the way on the right, I'm going to fill up that top shape. So I'm going to fill the whole thing in. Then I'm going to be working on the strap that's to the left. I want to start by filling in the whole thing. But I'm going to shift. I want to shift all the way to that left side and then just kind of outline along that left edge. So it starts off as a fat line gets thin. The opposite is what's going to happen on the other one. I'm going to start on that left side and then move my way over to the right and then fill it in. Okay, let's move on to the next sandal. We want to curve along that edge there. Okay, so we're sticking it to the bottom edge and then we're going to fill it in a little bit as it gets towards the end. This one we want to fill in the top side, and then we want to move over to that bottom edge there. So it will be very thin on the bottom instead. We need a clean plate, so I'm going to stick this empty one right on top of there. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to have my fan brush and my little tiny number zero script brush. I'm going to get two scoops of white. Another scoop of white over here, and a scoop of deep yellow. And we're going to mix two more scoops of white. It can even be a little dirty. A scoop of deep yellow, and a scoop of burnt sienna, maybe a tiny bit of the black. We want to start with this last color that we mixed. We're going to add some shadows underneath all the objects on the sand. We're going to go back and forth between the small brush and the fan brush. First, I'm going to make a line underneath each of the objects, either on the bottom side of the object or the side that is closest to the left. So I'm following whatever shape I gave myself, letting it be a little bit thin. The line is a little bit thin right where it starts. And then I push down my brush just a little bit, let it get a little bit thicker as it travels down. As it gets close to where I want it to end, I'll lift up a little bit so that the line is thinner there. I'm gonna work my way all the way down. So each shape, you can kind of look at where you already put that shadow color on the shape. So the sandals and the shells easy. You have to look carefully with the starfish. You have to follow each of the arms wherever the dark purple was. That's where you want to put the line. And then we're going to switch to the fan brush. Okay, because we want to get that kind of bumpy sand texture. So we're going to very carefully dab a little bit outside of that line. Let the line get a little bit thicker keeping true to the fact that everything is sitting on the sand. So it's gonna have that little bit of bumpy kind of rough texture coming out of the shadow. We're make, letting the shadow get a little bit bigger. We're still leaving the ends of the shadow thin though, so I'm careful to stay away from those areas. I like to switch to just using the corner of my brush in small areas. So when I go on the starfish especially, I'm just using the very corner of my brush, not the full length. And just very carefully getting some texture underneath each of those. Then I want to switch to the little tiny blue brush. I got to dry it off and clean it. And I want to grab that yellowish color that I made earlier, the white and the yellow. And I want to add highlights to my shell. So I'm focusing on the right side of the shell. So I'm going in between each little rivet, just the ones that are towards the right or close to the bottom part where the two parts of the shell connect. I'm going to have a little bit extra down there. Okay, I won't put too much of that, just a little bit. Then I want to get a scoop of white and a little dab of bright red. For the starfish, you can either use the white that we put on there or we can use a little bit of the pink that we just made. And you want to dab a whole bunch of little dots. Okay, You can either use the little tiny brush or if you want to make it a little faster, a little more natural looking, you can switch to the fan brush. Just use the corner of the fan brush though. 
and kind of dab, 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 dab a little texture here, a little texture there. Kind of get that starfish looking a little rough, a little bit bumpy. Okay, using it carefully though. Okay, and there's our painting. Here's a close up of it. Got all that cool sand texture going on, all those objects looking 3D sitting there. So I hope you had fun. This was a great painting. Join us again at Paint Along Studios TV.